When it comes to swim management, especially with feeder fishing, as we all know now, feeder events are so hugely popular, it is definitely not a case of casting a feeder out and fishing in one spot all day. Especially on commercials, it's about ex exercising the expanse of water out in front of you. The best way I look at it is we as humans naturally push nature away from us. But if you sit there nice and quiet, as the day progresses, the fish gain confidence, they become more curious, especially in the afternoon when it's that time where they know bait goes in. And what I mean by that is the angler packs away, what does he do? Chucks his bait away and then he walks up the bank, he gets down to his peg just to check that he's not left anything and the peg is full of carp. So actually utilising your swim and timing your peg and where to fish in your peg during the day and during that five hour period is so important. A fishing match isn't a race, it's a marathon. It doesn't matter what you've got halfway through, it's what you're weighing at the end. Regardless of whether it's a normal match or a feeder match, that last hour is absolutely crucial. So what you must do when you feed a fish is not just expect to expect to catch down one hole. Today, for example, I'm at Hawcroft Fisheries, I'm on the moat pool. I'm catching on the feeder across. Now, we're coming into the summertime now, back end of spring, the air temperature's getting warmer, the fish wanna be in that shallow water. So my first prerogative, like what I've already mentioned, we've made loads of noise, disturbance, getting everything ready, talking away, the fish naturally back away. So I'm actually fishing against the far bank in that shallow water. You can imagine that's where they'll feel nice and safe. And also, that's where there's some cover on the other bank. You've got some foliage hanging into the water. You might have a platform or a bush, some kind of cover to make the fish feel safe. And under match conditions, when the fish are under even more pressure from loads of anglers on the bank, that is the perfect example to start your match. However, it's very rare it's gonna work all day. So in the back of your mind, you've always gotta have a contingency plan. You've gotta always be prepared to spin plates. And that's the best way of looking at it. Always go to fishing or to a fishing event with an open mind. So if that line doesn't work or it fades on you or you stop catching, it doesn't surprise you. If you sit there, I suppose in a way with a stubborn attitude that you think you're gonna catch on it all day, it just doesn't work unless you're on an absolute load of fish. So as that day progresses, it's really important then to start thinking about feeding other swims. It's definitely not the case on your commercial scene, especially where at the beginning of the match or your pleasure session, that you feed everything at the start. You work your way through the day. So at the start, I've started across, it took an hour and a half for the fish to come, but gradually my pegs got stronger and stronger. And as expected, they've started backing away from it because now, they're wanting to move all over the lake. And also, like what I said earlier, they're starting to be inquisitive now. They wanted to come down this bank because this is the bank where the bait goes. Fish only come down the edge for one reason, and that is to feed. But if there's no food there, they're not gonna stay there. So at that halfway match, halfway point in that match, in my head, I wanna start adding an extra plate. I wanna start juggling another ball. And also it's something for you as an angler whilst you're fishing out on your original spot to look forward to actually dropping on because there's that opportunity of catching a few fish late on. And the chances are if you do it right, the size of the fish that you catch on this side of the lake as opposed to the other are a whole lot bigger because it's those clever, wise, big carp that come down the margin when everything's nice and quiet. Get organised, have good bankside management so you're not moving around a lot, make minimal disturbance, and let me tell you this, it's an absolute guarantee that you will catch down the edge. If you start moving around, getting off your box, making loads of noise, it's gonna really affect how that last hour pans out in your match or your, even your pleasure session. So a baiting rod is really, really important, whether it's down the margins or feeding it on the short pole, on the short pole line, eight, five to eight to 10 meters, on that shelf where fish feel really safe and confident to feed, later on in that day, that is so important. Now, the interesting thing about it is, it can work instantly if you feed it at the right time. 
if you set all your traps at the beginning of the day, you really lose touch with your swim. So I, what I want to do is I want to start spinning one plate, juggling one ball. I'm giving that line 110%, I'm building it up, I'm making it work. And in that time as well, I'm becoming more accurate because I'm in tune with my fishing. I've got nothing else in my head apart from that. And then when it gets to that halfway point, I then start thinking about opening, spinning another plate, juggling another ball. So this is where the baiting feeder comes in. It's not about putting a massive feeder on. This is a lovely, nice, big feeder, but not too big. Now, what you've got to remember is when I bait up my margin line or my short line, I'll just, I won't put one feeder full out. I will put several feeder fulls out. And corn, I'd say, is one of my most favorite ways of setting a trap. So I'll plug the feeder with sweet corn, like so. And then, Cap it off with some ground bait. Now, you've got the corn. You can imagine corn nice and bright, nice and visible, especially as that water becomes more colored during the summertime. It's so visible for the fish to see, but it's a heavy bait as well. Therefore, it stays in your swim for a longer period of time. And it also attracts all species. As we all know, every fish loves corn. Capped off with ground bait. The ground bait is a cloud. It adds particles into the water in your feeding zone and really does attract all species into your peg. Now, like what I said, I'm not just doing one feeder full, I'm doing several. And then I'm creating a feeding pattern. And by creating a feeding pattern, I'm creating a trail of bait that is gradually falling down from ground bait to particles onto the bottom. If you put one big feeder full out, the chances are those fish might not see that introduction of bait going through the water but if you do several casts sooner or later one or two fish will notice it or they'll hear it the noise is a big thing you can imagine when all the anglers pack away at the end of the day they chuck the bait in it makes noise and that's what fish come to noise and vibration so several feeder falls down the edge or on the short line or both if i feel that both might work really be positive and then you're setting a trap and then over the top you can imagine I'm then going to fish a lovely feeder, exactly the same size feeder as what I've been fishing across. And guess what's on the end? A nice yellow washer, which is, resembles exactly what I'm feeding down on the margin or the short line is a single grain of corn. So everything blends in with what I'm doing. Everything has meaning with what I'm doing. So next time you're out, don't just fish one spot, fish several spots, and be prepared to make those changes in the later parts of the day where you feel those fish are moving in because it will definitely catch you more fish and bigger fish. <laughs>